Plenty of gaming's most beloved mini-games are innocent enough. The key word there is, of course, innocent, a term that would not be used to describe, well, the vast majority of these embarrassing mini-games you should probably avoid next time you play these games. Though commonly and inaccurately labeled a Japanese Grand Theft Auto, the Yakuza franchise shares far more of its DNA with games like Shenmue and Persona 5 than Rockstar's infamous crime sim. Taking place in relatively small open environments, many of the Yakuza games chronicle the trials and tribulations of former Tojo clan chairman Kazuma Kirio as he navigates the seedy underworld of Tokyo's red light district and beyond. The Yakuza series blends absurdist comedy with gritty gangster pulp, and the result is the type of experience that answers the question, how can we take awkward, naughty adult phone time and make it 50% cringier and 100% more virtual? Turns out like this. The objective of Yakuza Zero's Telephone Club minigame is to visualize scantily clad women in suggestive poses, which is accomplished by selecting the correct voice lines from an assortment of floating phrases within a time limit. Couple the gameplay with the women's sultry voices and music straight out of a 90s Cinemax flick, and you've got a recipe for an awkward conversation with your partner, or your roommate, or your parents. Basically, being interrupted by any loved one halfway through Telephone Club guarantees an uncomfortable conversation. Final Fantasy X-2, the lazily named sequel to the ever-popular Final Fantasy X, takes place two years after its predecessor. Summoner Yuna and Riku have teamed up with their new companion, and Hot Topic employee most likely to ignore you, Pain, to form the Gull Wings, a team of sphere hunters. The game has a decent enough plot, but it's the engaging gameplay, particularly a slew of minigames, that arguably steals the show. One minigame, however, was not on par with the rest, and that's the back massage scene. Okay, sure, rival Sphere Hunter and LeBlanc Syndicate namesake LeBlanc obviously feels tired and achy after a long day of being a thorn in the girl wing's side. That, however, does not give her the right to a back massage courtesy of a high summoner. And yet, thanks to some shenanigans involving airships, disguises, and LeBlanc's chateau, that's exactly what Yuna ends up doing. While lasting only a few minutes, the minigame, which prompts you to Jack LeBlanc's satisfaction meter up and is full of cringe-inducing moaning, overstays its welcome almost immediately. What is it with awkward back massage minigames? While FF10-2's take on the act is uncomfortable in its own right, it doesn't hold a candle to a similar section in an obscure little 2000 PlayStation game called Incredible Crisis. A compilation of increasingly absurd minigames, Incredible Crisis follows a Japanese family, as a series of bizarre obstacles prevent them from celebrating grandmother Hotsu's birthday. Bizarre here, of course, alludes to giant teddy bears, UFOs, oh, and an innocent Ferris wheel ride that gets turned into an uncomfortably loud back massage sequence, courtesy of family patriarch Taneo. All the way down. Further down. Oh, a little down. A little. In a move that almost seems like the game itself, judging people for extramarital shenanigans, the woman to whom Taneo administers his services leaves a nice little surprise for the salacious salary man in the ferris wheel car, a bomb. Seems like she didn't exactly leave satisfied. That might sound embarrassing, and it is, but Incredible Crisis as a whole is chock full of absurd and often cringe-inducing minigames that somehow just work. That's kind of the game's charm, though, even if it's not the kind of charm you'd want your mom walking in on. And before you ask, of course the Yakuza games have their own version of a massage minigame, and of course as blue as it gets while just avoiding an AO rating. Not satisfied with simply ruining analog phones, the Yakuza series' sixth mainline installment upped the ante and moved the naughtiness to the internet in the form of a live chat minigame. Yeah, it's exactly what it sounds like. Live chat is basically a naughty webcam simulation complete with pre-recorded videos of real-life adult film actresses for, you know, realism's sake. Unlike Yakuza Zero's Telephone Club, which requires players to select the appropriate phrases within a certain time limit, winning the live chat minigame involves typing suggestive phrases by inputting the correct pattern of button presses before a timer bar runs out. As the minigame progresses, featuring tongue-in-cheek AI users with names like Veteran Drinker and Rock Lobster 420 contributing cringy commentary in faux chat, the performer removes more and more of her clothing. Yeah, it's basically that P word that rhymes with corn. 
And it's not exactly the kind of minigame you might feel proud of returning to again. But hey, you can just tell the mates that you're after that shiny trophy. From Chrono Trigger's Race Against Johnny to Mortal Kombat Armageddon's shockingly playable motor combat mode, plenty of otherwise non-vehicular video games boast racing minigames. So it makes sense that Shenmue 2, a critically adored game known for its diverse gameplay elements, would feature its own take on the popular trope. It's not like a racing minigame is new territory for the series either, as the first entry in the campy franchise played host to an infamous forklift racing section. What did turn out to be new, however, were the vehicles that did the racing. And by vehicles, we're obviously talking about bowtie-clad ducks. What's this? The duck race. Do you want to try? Hi! Do you want to play? While players are initially limited to placing bets on these feathered friends, protagonist Ryo can eventually claim his very own duck, controlling it as it flaps its way past traffic cones and between oil drum obstacles. It's absurd, it's embarrassing, and it's as perfectly Shenmue as he often painfully charming to a fault series gets. After all, nothing takes the edge off after a long day of hunting your father's killer like taking an old-fashioned DRB, a duck race break. Speaking of bird-related action, United Friends 2012 open-world crime thriller Sleeping Dogs boasts its very own take on poultry exploitation, roosterfizing. Of course, rooster isn't the word the game uses. In between busting triad gangsters and mastering martial arts, protagonist and undercover SDU agent Wei Shen can immerse himself in a number of activities throughout the game's four districts of Hong Kong. These range from innocent activities like rhythm-based karaoke minigames to seedier, more morally ambiguous fare, like the aforementioned Foulomania. While Sleeping Dogs unfortunately doesn't let you leap into the skin of a chicken, pecking away at your opponent like you're preparing tomorrow's dinner, it does encourage gambling on said brawling birds, and while it may represent a pretty fair way to make an in-game buck, it's an awfully brutal sight to behold. The camera doesn't cut away as your chosen chicken savagely attacks its feathered foe. Sleeping Dogs showcases countless acts of brutality between its human characters, but its rooster-fighting minigame is arguably harder to watch. If only because it means the bird you've got your money riding on could be tomorrow's lunch. Bon appetit! In an April 2018 interview with PlayStation Access, Yakuza series producer Daisuke Sato was asked to sum up the open-world crime thriller series in one sentence. His response? I feel that Yakuza is a series where you can do stupid things very seriously. And it's hard to argue with Sato's assertion, considering some of the Yakuza games' sub-stories and minigames. After all, no other video game franchise lets you go from intense, blood-spattered beat-em-up action to a bathroom-based arcade-style minigame that demands you use your stream to force your opponent out of the ring. The premise of the Toilets minigame is simple. Protagonist Kiryu must control his stream in order to accomplish some task like blow a woman's dress up or force his opponent out of a ring while ensuring that he doesn't run out of ahem, uh, ammunition. One of Toilette's levels, for instance, Milky Nose Splash Battle, sees Kiryu's avatar facing off against a series of opponents as the foes blast one another with streams of milk from their noses, rather than, well, you know. Every Toilet minigame is a literal exercise in potty humor, one that's best enjoyed away from the judgmental eyes of the more mature members of gamers' households. Burning thighs might sound more like the name of that extra spicy chicken dish from your favorite local barbecue joint, but it's actually an awkward mini-game with something of a legacy. While Square Enix critically lauded Final Fantasy VII Remake features its own incarnation of the mini-game, complete with masterfully rendered missile-bound gym rats, it actually featured prominently in an early section of the original FF7. Of course, given the technical limitations of the PlayStation in 1997, Cloud and his co-squat doers look more like Lego men than the meatheads they're meant to resemble. The FF7 remake, however, doesn't hold back on portraying this band of butt-kicking beefy boys in their full flamboyant awesomeness. Like many a minigame, Burning Thighs involves timing specific button presses in order to outsquat your opponent. And while completing the entire section nabs players some nifty rewards, this one should probably get filed in the if you can spend a whole chunk of real lifetime doing a fake life workout, maybe consider using that time to actually work on those glutes section. Plenty of video games push players into otherwise mundane activities that, when gamified, are actually tons of fun. Yakuza 5's ramen delivery substory, which sees co-protagonist Saijima balancing a bowl of ramen down an icy sidewalk, springs immediately to mind. 
Heck, games like Overcooked have taken the high-stress setting of a busy restaurant and built an entire four-player party game around it. To put it bluntly, the reason that Shenmue's infamous forklift driving section is so hated, where similar job sections and other games are so beloved, is because it makes work feel like… well, work. Sure, one can argue that, in a game like Shenmue that reveled in the mundane, picking up and putting down crates with a forklift for literal hours represents the pinnacle of the immersive and realistic shtick to which the title aspired. But immersive and realistic doesn't always equal fun. Especially considering that protagonist Ryo's forklift job was actually mandatory to advance the game's plot. All in all, driving Shenmue's forklift feels like an actual job. So, to all players who actually enjoyed it, maybe just get a job driving forklifts? It's even more immersive than the video game version, we promise. Let's face it, the Dead or Alive games have always at least partly revolved around virtual, bikini-clad vixens whose bodies abide by a form of jiggle physics otherwise exclusive to the daydreams of pubescent boys. Though the Dead or Alive franchise has its roots in the fighting game genre, it's arguably better known these days for turning fan service into a science by dragging its female characters onto a tropical island and swapping out the violence for volleyballs. Yes, it's as exploitative as it's genuinely fun to play. But Dead or Alive Extreme's volleyball modes comprise a mere fraction of the subseries' steamy gameplay. Though Dead or Alive Extreme 3, the long-running franchise's 2016 entry, features a number of minigames each more risque than the last, it's the title's butt battle mode that dials the naughtiness up to 11. There's no need for an in-depth description for this butt-based blockbuster of bombastic rump wrestling. Butt battles are exactly as absurd as their name implies, and gamers everywhere would be wise to put DOAX 3's most cheeky mode in their rearview mirror as quickly as possible. Originating in iconography of ancient Egypt, the image of a snake eating its own tail or Ouroboros has come to represent the cyclical nature of all existence, and so it seems only fitting that what began with the perpetual perversion of Yakuza 0's Telephone Club minigame ends, for now, with Yakuza Kiwami's Meso King, an arcade game where you pit barely clothed insect-themed women wrestlers against one another. All of this, by the way, and this is key to understanding why Mesu King sits upon a throne of cringe, represents an attempt to outplay your rival. And in this case, your rival is a very, very young preteen Mesu King prodigy, the aptly named Professor Mesu King. Listen, boys and girls, there's nothing inherently wrong with the concept of Mesu King and his vivacious virtual vixens. But between the suggestive maneuvers that constitute the Mesu King combatants' move lists to the R rated grunts and groans, playing this mini game out in the open is a one way ticket to the talk. The Yakuza games are full of weird things, but this might be the weirdest bit of all. Just kidding, that honor goes to Mr. Libido. Duh. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more SVG videos about your favorite things are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and to the bell so you don't miss a single one.